Good morning to you. Welcome to our Sunday worship. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 66. Praise God with shouts of joy, all people. Sing to the glory of his name. Say to the Lord, how wonderful are the things you do. Everything on earth praises you. They sing praise to you. They sing praises to your name. We sing together the hymn, Praise is Rising. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Cause when we find strength to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away washed away Worthy of all. 
and now let us pray. We share together in this prayer written by John van Alaar. Praise be to you, God of life, for the shoot that breaks through the earth, that strains towards the sun, that blossoms and makes of its fruit an offering to the world. Praise be to you, God of life, for the seed that dies and is resurrected into tree, for the tree whose longevity whispers a parable of eternity. Praise be to you, God of life, for your presence and purpose that infuses all creation and calls us to follow, to embrace life, to share life and to offer the fruit of our lives as worship to you. O gracious God, when we, for the times we are blind to your beauty, forgive us. For the times we doubt your loving goodness, forgive us. For the times in which we are blind to your creating power around us, forgive us and give to us once again a vision today of you the God who is with us in all the seasons of our lives. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, and from verse 15 to verse 21. Jesus is speaking and he says, If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper who will stay with you forever. He is the Spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him, because it cannot see him or know him. But you know him, because he remains with you and is in you. When I go, you will not be left all alone. I will come back to you. In a little while the world will see me no longer, but you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. When that day comes, you will know that I am in my Father, and that you are in me, just as I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. My Father will love those who love me. I too will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. When we go through difficult and challenging times, having somebody with us, somebody who, as it were, holds our hand, is really helpful, isn't it? I actually read this week that holding the hand of a loved one actually decreases their level of pain. I was so saddened to read of the incident of a man in the Western Cape uh, this week who died from COVID-19. And because of the circumstances uh, around this disease and the treatment in hospital, there could be nobody with him. There was nobody there to hold his hand, not even the medical staff who were treating him. And I thought to myself, how hard that must have been. 
In the passage we read from John, Jesus is trying to prepare his disciples for the difficulties and the challenges that lay ahead of them. And in doing that, he gives them the assurance that even though he will not be there physically, yet in the spirit he will still be with them, there, as it were, to hold their hands. And so his promise to them is that the spirit will be with them and will be within them. Now let's talk about how Jesus was with his disciples. In verse 16 of the passage that we read, the Spirit is described as another helper. And the implication of that is that Jesus was the first helper. He was the one who was with his disciples, who held their hands, if you like, in a particular way. So how was Jesus helper then to his disciples? Well, if we review his journey with his disciples, we see that when he had taught the people things and the disciples didn't quite understand what he meant, then Jesus would help them to understand what, was, what it was he was trying to teach. Jesus gently corrected their attitudes or their behavior when they got things wrong. Remember the time, for example, when they were arguing about who was the greatest. And then Jesus actually allowed his disciples to participate in some of the miracles that he performed. Remember the feeding of the 5,000? It was the disciples who he said, you give out the food. And what a thrill it must have been for them just to see there was just more and more and more to distribute. And then when the disciples were anxious and afraid and doubtful, and Jesus was at their side to encourage them and to strengthen them. We can easily remember and think about his appearances to them after his resurrection. But when we talk about Jesus as uh, the helper, let us also not forget that it is the whole of his human life that gives expression to us of a God who is with us and who is our helper close at hand through all the tragedies and difficulties and challenges of human life. Now let us talk about the way in which the Spirit is a helper to us in our lives in the same way as Jesus was a helper to his disciples. So we find that the Spirit is there teaching us the greater truths of Christ and their relevance and their application in our modern time and to our modern lives. One of the things, for example, that I think the Spirit is teaching us is the interconnectedness and the oneness of all things in creation. And then the Spirit teaches us how to live out our Christian lives and commitment to Christ in the modern time in which we live. One of the things, for example, I think the Spirit has, is teaching us is that as the negative impact of humanity's living on the earth takes its toll, we find that the Spirit is convicting us and showing us that living in an environmentally friendly way is part and parcel of our Christian witness and our commitments to Christ. And then there is the way in which the Spirit addresses issues within our lives that needs changing. So I know for myself that that has been true. And there was the time when the Spirit troubled me with my drivenness and troubled me with my need to, to address that and to change that. 
And maybe you have been experiencing something of that in your life as well. The Spirit just disturbing you about some attitude or behavior that needs addressing and changing. And then, of course, there is the way in which the Spirit strengthens us, encourages us, and comforts us uh, as we struggle with the challenges and the pain and the suffering of our lives. I have been quite anxious about the way in which this COVID-19 uh, experience has um, been costly to the church and the way in which it has impacted on the uh, livelihoods of so many people. And so it was of great encouragement to me this week when in one of my devotions I found myself led to reflect on the passage where God was making this promise. What you have lost, I will give back to you. Has there been a time in this week in which you have found the Spirit encouraging you in this time? Now, talking about the Spirit, and that the Spirit is the way in which Christ continues to be with us as our helper, brings us to a very important point. And it is about the ministry of presence, or the service of being alongside people. Let us never forget that we, as the followers of Christ, are the body of Christ. We are the ways in which Christ is present and concrete in his world and in the lives of people. It is the calling and the work of the Spirit to lead us to the side of people that need us, to lead us into the world where we can serve and where we can do something. Now this is not such an easy thing for us to go with and to cooperate with. On the one hand, it is a very painful thing to be part of people's suffering. I know for myself how gut-wrenching it is when I have to go to be with the family, a family who is bereaved. And I know how my heart pounds in those situations. But I always have to remind myself that being there and showing up is a part of showing that the Spirit of Christ is there with them. But the other reason, I think, why it is difficult for us to be with people is, of course, during this time of COVID-19, there are all kinds of restrictions imposed on us, and we can't just pop into people as we used to. And so we have to ask the Spirit and depend on the Spirit to show us other ways in which we can meaningfully be with people, hold their hands through times of difficulty and through times of challenge. Making contact with people, either by a telephone call or uh, even a WhatsApp, is actually really helpful to them. I read some time ago that one of the ways to help somebody who is in an abusive home situation is to regularly make contact with them, checking up on, on how they are and how they are coping. This week I learned once again how important it is for us to pray for people. Two people actually let me know how much they appreciated my prayers. They told me about the way in which their loved, the situation in which their loved one was had improved and how helpful it was to them that I had been with them in my prayers. And so, how is it that you can be with somebody, serving them with your presence? And so to conclude, my encouragement today is being reminded that through the Spirit, Christ continues to be our helper, just as he was for his disciples. 
And through the Spirit, we are taught what it means to live out the life of Christ in our own, in a way that is meaningful to us and relevant to our world. But there is a challenge today, and it is the challenge that we be with people, that we be the ones through whom Christ holds their hand in the challenges and the difficulties of their lives. This is always the Spirit's calling. And we are challenged to live with the question, to whom does the Spirit send me today? Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for encouraging us today and thank you for reminding us that you are with us as our helper, as our comforter, as the one who holds our hand through all the experiences of life. Help us to be sensitive to your call to be alongside people that you would touch through our presence and through our love. Today we would pray, especially for those who are critically ill in intensive care units with COVID-19. In their isolation from all human touch, be with them and grant to them an actual physical warmth of your presence, which lets them know that you hold their hand through their time of crisis. We pray that you would be with their families and that you would comfort and encourage and strengthen them as they want to be with their loved one but can't. Give to them people who will make real your presence in their lives. We pray this through Christ our Lord and for his sake. Amen. And so may you experience in your life the fellowship of the Spirit. In other words, the God who loves you, the Christ who is full of grace and who holds your hand through all you go through. And so we conclude this time by singing that beautiful hymn, Holy Spirit, Living Breath of God. That sows the path 
the world to see. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.